Hi, I'm Samantha Stewart. I'm the Learning Director for Maths here at Barnsley Academy. Um, over the last couple of years, as a, a faculty, we've been looking at firming up the Key Stage 3 curriculum in particular so that we were all aware uh, what we were going to be teaching module by module. And furthermore, for example, if a teacher was away, um, there was some cover work that, uh, that another teacher in the, the academy could, could easily locate and access. Um, here at Barnsley Academy we use the It's Learning uh, platform to put our Key Stage 3 work on and all the staff use this. So here you can see the folder for Key Stage 3. So if I now click onto our Year 7, the whole scheme of work is there for the whole year. Uh, in paper form here, we can see exactly uh, what coverage we've got in terms of any national curriculum levels. Uh, so that's the, the scheme of work. If I go back to the, yes, the Key Stage 3 folder, back onto Year 7, I now know, for example, there's a Year 7 calendar here so I now know uh, what I'm teaching and when, and also what the report will be, or what will look like, report to parents uh, from that module of work. So if I go back to the Year 7 folder now, I can see that in September, when my Year 7s arrive, this is what we'll be, get, we'll be doing for that time. So on this particular example here, we're looking at measures and the units of measurement, reading mass, etc. And what is important also is that the children have access as well. We do set specific tasks uh, for the children to do. Um, and we do know, um, for example, at the weekend, sometimes maybe late on a Friday night, we can see which students are online and that are actually accessing the, the curriculum. And we, we notice this not just through Key Stage 3, but also up to Key Stage 5 as well, so we can see which students are, are working at the moment and revising. Uh, if I go back to the uh, curriculum, again, you can see this takes us through Year 7, Year 8 and Year 9. Um, and again, throughout the curriculum, you can see the various different topics that are going to take you to the end of Year 9. But more importantly, if I click on to, for example, this Module 1 for Year 9, you can also see that we've got LM interactive explosion of cuboids and that stands for lower and middle ability bands of students. Here we've got LM, LMH so the, that's the higher group as well. We've noticed that certain children um, respond well to different types of stimulus. We all respond to different types of colours, maybe different types of sounds. So again, uh, we're appealing to different types of learners and personalising the learning in that sense. Help with shape and space, which is one of our weaker areas we found as children come up from primary school. Shape and space are incredibly um, difficult for some students to access. So we found that using ICT uh, to show how to construct uh, certain triangles and the angles inside a triangle, um, it's made it easier for our students to learn. Also, I think that the different voice, sometimes you may find a clip of someone from somewhere else that uh, has produced something, and I think um, a different voice can sometimes um, uh, open up a student to, to learn and he may be going through a certain part in the lesson or she may be going through a certain part in the lesson when she feels a little bit tired or whatever and a certain voice may elicit uh, more learning. Learning and getting to grips with the new technology is always difficult and we did have time um, on an inset day uh, almost a year ago now where we had a chance to have a look at the um, ways of adding things, adding files, adding links onto the system. Um, and you learn by trial and error most of the time and, and we, we're not afraid to go and ask each other what we're doing wrong or go into someone in the ICT department if they've got uh, some way of embedding something that we don't know how to do. Uh, for example, uh, we may have found a, a, a clip on YouTube and uh, we're trying to put a link but we can't put the link to it, it won't embed for whatever reason. Uh, we're not afraid to go and ask each other about that. I've been teaching for 20 years now and I still sort of feel a little bit of sort of anxiety about technology, will it let me down? But I always know I've got a sea of faces in front of me and someone in, in, in the audience or in the class will know what to do to help me out and they're always keen to help out. Well our results uh, were um, two years ago we were, were on 19% 
Last year, our GCSE, GCSE results went up to 51% in maths. We've already got some of our students in year nine that have passed their GCSE maths. And one might say, well, they were following just a key stage three curriculum. Yes, they were, but we were tailoring that to the higher end of what we'd already put in, into place. So we think that that all contributed, as well as having a fantastic teacher in Miss Rezai, but that all contributed to the fact that now they're now sitting on their GCSE and working towards the higher. As a department, um, it's brought us together much more because producing worksheets, as we all do as teachers, uh, busy beavering away, uh, sometimes we produce things and then we forget what we've produced and it may be something that worked really well maybe 15 months ago and we've forgotten about it. So instead of reinventing the wheel, we're actually producing worksheets, discussing it in department meetings and saying if it does work, we'll get it up on there on the virtual learning platform. Uh, in, in respect to that, whilst we're discussing that, we're actually sharing good practice. Uh, we're opening ourselves up because sometimes it's, it's very easy to fall into the trap of hiding yourself away in a classroom. So we're talking about the learning uh, and what went well. Um, so literally our uh, virtual learning platform has got what we think actually works in the classroom.